Hey guys, Thomas Joseph here. Now, a chocolate tart is an elegant dessert for any dinner party or maybe even a brunch. But oftentimes, recipes call for you making a ganache. And while ganache is delicious, oftentimes it can be really pasty and thick and not great to eat. So today I'm gonna to show you a hybrid method, a ganache custard method, for making a delicious tart filling. So let's get started. To get started, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So this is kind of a standard tart or pie that's made with a ganache filling. And with an equal ratio of cream and chocolate, usually what happens is you get something that's really kind of stiff and pasty. And while it's tasty because it's chocolate and cream, it's not necessarily something you wanna eat a whole slice of, maybe just one bite or something like that. So today I thought I'd share with you my favorite method for making a chocolate tart filling. And again, it's a hybrid method. So you get that wonderful richness from the chocolate ganache, but we also add a few other ingredients that give it a light custardy texture that's really fantastic. I'm going to start with one cup of heavy cream, kind of a standard ingredient used in making a chocolate ganache. And I'm going to heat this over a medium low heat and I just wanna see nice bubbles forming around the perimeter of the pan. You don't wanna overboil your cream. It might separate the cream. The other ingredient that's necessary in making a chocolate ganache is of course chocolate. And I'm using eight ounces of chocolate and you wanna make sure you're using a high quality chocolate here because this is really the key ingredient. And there aren't really that many ingredients in this to begin with. So use high quality ingredients if you can find them. So I'm just chopping up this chocolate and I like to use a serrated knife for this because the teeth on the serrated knife really help to chip the chocolate into nice small pieces. And that's really important when making a ganache because the smaller the pieces, the easier and more evenly the chocolate will melt with the cream. Now, I'm using a dark chocolate. This is a semi-sweet chocolate. If you're a fan of something a little bit more you know, with a richer, kind of a darker flavor to it. You could use bittersweet chocolate as well. It's really up to your preference in terms of the level of sweetness. So this looks good, nice and finely chopped, and I'm gonna add this to my bowl here. So in total, again, it's eight ounces of the best quality chocolate chopped into really fine, fine, fine pieces. And now my cream is just starting to bubble. I'm gonna turn the heat off and I'm going to pour this over the chocolate. And one thing guys, you wanna make sure that you don't stir this mixture yet. Let it sit for about a minute to two minutes before giving this a nice stir. And what that does is the hot cream helps to melt the chocolate evenly. And then when you stir it, there won't be any little lumps of chocolate. So this is an important step. Let it rest for about a minute. All right, so it's been about two minutes here, you guys, and now it is time to mix the ganache together. So I like to use a whisk, give it a good stir, and everything should combine really nicely because we've given the chocolate enough time to melt evenly. And this just looks amazing. I love how it all comes together. And it's really beautiful and shiny. Now, while this is still a little bit warm, I'm going to add the remainder of my ingredients. The first is a tablespoon of butter. Now, butter really helps to kind of enrich this filling, and it will also provide even more shine, which is really nice in a tart. You want something that has a beautiful, shiny, silky texture to it. And if your mixture is still warm, and that's why I'm adding the butter first before my other ingredients, it will help to melt evenly into the ganache. So butter in. The next ingredient is an egg. So as I said before, this is kind of a hybrid method, a custard ganache mixture. So this egg will help in making the chocolate set nicely, but giving it a really beautiful silken texture. And the last ingredient, is a little bit of milk. This is a quarter of a cup of whole milk that I'm using. And again, the milk plus the eggs will give a lightness, a custardiness to our wonderful chocolate filling. Now, this filling is different. You might be saying, oh, does, is this like a pudding? Is this kind of like chocolate cream pie? And the answer is no, because chocolate cream pie or puddings, while they are kind of custardy base, they are thickened using a starch. So most recipes use cornstarch as a thickener, or some recipes even use flour, but this does not. So it's not gonna be pasty or pudding-like at all. It's gonna be really silken and delicate. So this looks fantastic. 
It's all mixed together. And now I'm going to transfer this into a blind bake crust. Now I'm using a fluted tart pan with a removable bottom, and this is a press in cookie crust. But really, this is up to you guys. You can use any type of blind baked crust you like. Blind baking, again, is where the crust is completely cooked before you add the filling into it. Pour in the chocolate mixture and make sure your oven is preheated to 300 degrees. Now, usually with custards like creme brulee or creme caramel or even flan, we like to cook custards at a lower temperature for a longer period of time. This way the egg sets with a lower temperature, but it doesn't get a broken or grainy texture to it. So a low temperature for a long time is really ideal for custards. And this is going into the oven. Center rack is always best for about 20 to 24 minutes until the mixture is set with a slight jiggle in the center. All right guys, so the tart has been out of the oven. You can see it still has a nice shiny top to it. Um, and this is cooled completely. So room temperature cooled completely. Now you could store this in the refrigerator overnight if you wanted to make it a day ahead, but it's always kind of nice to serve this uh, closer to room temperature, not so, so cold. Now, again, we made this tart in a fluted tart pan with a removable bottom, and I thought I'd show you how to take it out. Now, what you need to do is place your hand underneath the tart and you should be able to separate it very easily from the ring. Now, keep the ring kind of around your hand and gently place the tart down on your cutting board, or if you wanted to transfer this immediately to a cake stand, you could do that as well. But this is kind of the easiest way to remove the tart from the pan. Now, to slice this guy, I like to use a carving knife. So I'm gonna give a nice, beautiful wedge. And I like to dip it in the water in between slices so that I get a nice clean cut each and every time. Let's see, that looks like a nice beautiful slice there. Transfer this to your plate. Now you could serve this with whipped cream, you could serve it with creme fraiche, whatever you guys like. I'm using a little creme fraiche today right on top. The acidity in the creme fraiche really helps to offset the richness of this tart. So there you go, guys, a delectable chocolate tart that's rich in flavor, just like a ganache, but silken in texture. Oh my God, this is amazing. This is something you would find in the finest pastry shops in Paris. Now I encourage you to give this recipe a try. As always, reach out to us using the hashtag Kitchen Conundrums. We love to see what you're making and we'd love to help you with any problems you have. Enjoy, guys. And as always, guys, click like and subscribe.